Okay, yeah, I've got the slides. Has everyone got the slides on their main screen? Yeah. yeah. He's even nodding. Good. Great. Okay. Well, um, welcome everybody. Um, thank you very much for giving up a bit of your morning um, to hear about Arbor this morning. I really appreciate it. A um, few housekeeping points before we get started. So um, please stay on mute unless you are asking a question. If you do want to ask a question, feel free to unmute or just um, type it in the chat. Um, but it uh, yeah, helps reduce the kind of feedback. Um, put your video on if you can. I think I think everybody has. Um, it's just good to see people's faces. Um, uh, yeah, do use the chat box if you want to. I will keep an eye on that as well and, and answer questions in there so that we don't get too many piled up at the end. But, but we'll try and leave a bit of time for some Q&A at the end. Um, yeah, no question is a silly question. Um, please do just ask away. Um, and we will send you the slides afterwards um, via the email that you use to register. Um, and then we'll we'll get in touch to see if you'd like to set up sort of more one to one conversation about your school specifically. Um, but what we're going to cover today, um, so introductions we've done, um, we're going to look at why schools are choosing Arbor at the moment, um, an overview of Arbor. So it'll be a, a demo of the system uh, by my colleague Mark. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the support you can get for Arbor now through Vitalize IT as your partner um, and a, a summer term offer that we're running for schools as well that should help you switch um, a little bit uh, more flexibly um, and, and not pay uh, until later in the year and then as I say if we've got any time for questions we'll run through them then. Um, so we do some introductions. I don't think that I've got a little um, icon. So just to introduce myself, I'm Beth. I manage partnerships at Arbor. So I look after um, our relationship with Vitalize IT. So I've been working with Stuart for a couple of years now and um, things are going really well. We've got a few schools um, moved to Arbor and Vitalize are um, accredited to provide support. So um, yeah, it's all been going really well from our perspective. Um, I think only, only thing to add about me is um, I, always worked at Arbor since I came out of university, just got stuck here um, and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, and in my spare time, I'm a school governor. Um, so I do kind of try to understand the world of schools a little bit as well. Um, Mark, I'll pass on to you to introduce yourself. Yeah, good morning. My name is Mark. I'm the partnership manager for Arbor. Uh, I'm working with primary, um, primary schools mainly, uh, single secondaries and primary maths. Uh, I have been a teacher in an SCBD school, so worked in behavioral schools for quite some time. Um, and a fun fact that Arbor does love, I have uh, written a novel that completed mm -hmm. about four months ago. Um, yeah, and I'll be doing the demo with you this morning. And Stuart? Thanks very much, Beth. Yes, I'm the, I'm the uh, owner of Vitalize IT, and um, Vitalize has been going for 12 years now, and we specialize in supporting schools with learning platforms. So uh, we've been a Google partner for a, a number of years and we can also help schools that have gone down the Microsoft route as well. And um, Arbor is a very exciting um, uh, new, new um, initiative for us. We've been very impressed with Arbor. We're, we're all about, uh, we, we see the benefits of moving to the cloud as being quite significant and what we've seen with Google and putting your MIS in the, cl in the cloud as well. Um, and an exciting, fresh company that's got some new, ex exciting ideas. They're putting some um, really good features and functionality in, the ability to access it from any device, from any location. Um, we were quite surprised when we saw what schools were sort of restricted to with, with the legacy MIS system. So we're very excited to be a partner of Arbor, and we see it being a, a significant growth area for us over, over the coming years. And um, I, I spotted that Mark had written a book, so I put, I, I'd written a book as well, but it was about VDI and not many people bought it. So I think I'd rather read Mark's book. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> written a book, sadly, but now I feel like I've it. Um, great, so um, we'll start with a bit about Arbor and, and why schools choose um, move to Arbor. So um, our mission is really to transform the way schools work for the better. So um, other MIS companies um, might uh, that, you, that you might use are, are kind of typically seen as really a back office system that's used by admin staff. Arbor is trying to transform across the whole school and with all staff and, and, and really the, the goal of that is to improve student outcomes ultimately. It seems like a bit of a lofty goal for our management information system but um, we really think that the time that you can save and the improved insights that you can get out of a system like Arbor um, make that possible. Um, so we were actually um, we measure how we do that as well. So we survey our schools on a regular basis, I think three or, three or four times a year, um, and we ask them, have we helped you save time? Have we helped you improve the way that you analyze and understand your data? 
And since you've moved to Arbor, do you feel that you have actually transformed the way that your school works for the better? Um, and as you can see, we get really good um, statistics on that. Um, and, and we are constantly trying to push those um, higher. And that's the goal of everyone in Arbor. Um, so you will see there's a lot of people like Mark um, who've got teaching experience or have been head teachers, senior leaders in schools before they joined us. Um, and that, that's really important to us all. Um, we are also the fastest growing MIS. So um, we now support over 1,800 schools and mats across the country. Um, and in the last sort of few censuses, um, when you look at the data, it's, it's actually now, I think, nearly one in two schools that switch MIS to Zalba. Um, so we're growing really quickly. And I think that's that's a testament to the work that we've done to, um, to, to make sure that we're impacting on um, those metrics around saving time and, and helping you actually analyze and understand your data better. So we aim to give you tools that will give you a better working life, first and foremost. So we're designed with schools and for schools. It's intuitive, it's a user-friendly system. Um, the idea is to free staff from just doing manual, kind of busy work um, day to day and, and to enable you to work together a little bit more easily and to collaborate um, remotely so that people can work from home or school. And if you're collaborating with other schools across the mat, you can do that more easily as well. Um, to give you deeper insights, so I touched on this kind of um, getting data at your fingertips, but really, really strong reporting that surfaces insights to you that you might not have thought to go and look for. So not just you having to go and build a report because you want to look at people green or children in year six, for example, but the system actually flagging to you you might want to look at these student groups. These are the highest for particular metrics like um, low attendance, persistent absentees, um, attainment, behaviour, things like that. Um, so, so data being at your fingertips and a, and a holistic view as well that includes DFE performance data. So we're also an accredited supplier of um, ASP, Analyze School Performance Data. So we have that within the product as well, side by side with your live data. Um, and in terms of support, we have um, a really big team that works closely with the DfE and with local authorities to make sure that the product is constantly developing. Um, we've also um, publicised our roadmap so you can um, tell us what's working for you and what's not and what you need more of um, and, and what we need to develop for you. Um, and we've also built a network of support units. So um, Vitalize IT is one of those. Um, and that's really opened up choice for schools. So, you know, with, with previous legacy MIS suppliers, they, they didn't have very much choice. You kind of would have to use your local support, you know, your local authority perhaps, um, or go direct to the supplier. Um, with Arbor, we've, we've built a really um, kind of diverse network of different support units. And so you've, you're able to get people like Vitalize who can support you on Google and lots of other cloud services and on Arbor um, and kind of really take you on that journey to the cloud. So I think uh, without further ado, I will hand over to Mark, who's going to give you a look at the system itself. You to play with okay, you should be able to see my screen, which is the Waterford Primary School. Yes. Okay, so uh, Arbor is a really big system and it's a really sophisticated system. Um, for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to take you through some of the main features, but I'm not going to go into all of the, the sort of deep depths of assessments. Um, and behavior as such. I want to give you a kind of overview of how it kind of all flows and works together. And then after that, we, we would do a personalized demo for you as an individual. So cloud-based system, you log on from anywhere, any device, you've logged on, you've got your home page that you're looking at. Now, that's the first thing that you arrive at. So the difference is that Arbor is talking to three different audiences. It's talking to head teachers and SLT, it's talking to administrators and it's also talking to teachers. The difference can be seen here in the tab, my students versus whole school. So let's say I'm logged in as Mia Richards. I'm the deputy head. I'm also the year five teacher of this school. My student tab is telling me all of the real time data of the students that I'm associated with. I know that because this tab is telling me all of the students I'm currently working with. And I can toggle these on and off, just like I can toggle pupil premium on or off or male disadvantage on or off. And you'll notice that behind on the dynamic dashboard, it's changing in real time. And that's because Arbor is using live data. So you don't have to go and run reports. It's instant real time data for you to surface information about 
your students. So if you need that pupil premium data about your year fives, here it is. Now, if you are the administrator and you need just need the whole school, you'll just have the whole school tab. And again, you've got the live data of attendance, behavior and attainment. Now, if you want to toggle off behavior and just focus on attainment attendance, it's as simple as switching things on and off. And now you've got that live data of your attendance in a clear view. Teachers, this came about from us talking to schools. Teachers said, I love this, but what I want is just to access my data for my students without having to go to the office or run a report. So here it is. I can now go on to the attendance of my pupil premium. I can click into that. Now I can see all the demographics that are making up my pupil premium year five data. I can look at it via the students. And here are all my students who are year five pupil premium. And I know that because the filters in Arba are telling me that. And that's what we use. We use really powerful filters that we can turn off or on and instantly say to Arba, show me my year five, show me my SEN, show me my year six, SEN, pupil premium, free school meal, and save the changes. And you get that instant access to your data. And, you know, running a school is complex enough, but sifting through data shouldn't be. It should be an easy solution. Let's just go back to the home page. So everybody gets a to do list as well. So if you're a teacher, you might have incomplete registers. You might have behavioral incidents, assessments to do. You will see them here assigned to you. I personally really like the student alerts. I think this is excellent. So here before I go into my lesson to the register, I can say, oh, yeah, it's I've got three birthdays in my class today. But more importantly, let's say mum and dad have phoned up and one of my children um, has had an incident this morning. It can be reported and we can create a student alert here. So when I log in as the teacher, I can see, oh, right. Yeah. Ted Adams has had a difficult morning. I know that here. Everybody gets a calendar. And when you click on the calendar, it will take you to the lesson dashboard, which I'll show you shortly. But more importantly, if you are, you know, the administrator and you need to know the attendance, here we go straight away, whole school. Let's have a look at all the students. Put it into an order, 100% down to 76 point at Hannah Hall. And in Arba, as soon as you see a student's name, you click on it, it takes you to the student profile. This really is the heartbeat of Arba. And if you want to find a student, it couldn't be simpler. You type in the name and you click on it and it takes you to their student profile. I, I say this is the heartbeat of Arba because it is, because the whole system is wrapped around the child. So you don't have to go to different pieces of software, different add-ons to gather the information. It's all centrally held, neatly wrapped around the student. So what do I mean by that? OK, first of all, let's say the phone has, has run. And um, it's the parents of Ted, and we know that Ted is SEN support because what Arbor is doing here is pushing out the color badges here. And that's letting you know SEN support, free school meal, pupil premium has a medical good. We instantly know that. So whoever's working with Ted can see it by the color badges. Let's say he's had a difficult morning. We know he's on the autistic spectrum. Or like my son who has epilepsy, he may have had a seizure this morning. I phone the school. What do I do? I log the phone call. So I'm in the office, I'm receiving the phone call, date and time's already pre-populated, and then I put the story in and I log the call. Simple, easy, and all, all comms, telephone, in-app notifications, text messages, emails, everything is chronologically held in order against the student. So that phone call that's just come in, that will be logged here. And if you need to, you can download all of the comms between home and school in a simple PDF. Now, I spoke about that pastoral note that you can add, uh, the, the student alert. So if the phone has rang and let's say, you know, Ted's had a seizure this morning, we would put it here. We'd create a pinned item. It'd be pinned to the top of the profile, pastoral note, so TLC needed. And I'll click on that and that's going to just give me a bit of information. But when the teacher comes in in the morning, they will see that Ted's got a new pastoral note. Click on it. Oh, he's had a seizure this morning. He's going to need a little bit more TLC than usual. We now know that. So you can create as many of these as you want. You can date stamp them so they disappear. They can be there forever. So this is, you know, there's dietary, there's risk assessments, no contact with dad. So again, whoever's working with Ted, it could be the football club in the afternoon, has got this information at hand straight away. So I've mentioned the colour badges. 
But all the other sections you'd expect are here and you can click onto it and jump straight to it or you can scroll down. Now let's say you want to get a quick story around the attendance. Well, first of all, I like to go to the stats and do a group comparison. So how, how is Ted comparing to other children like him? So he's doing all right, actually. He's not doing too bad. So we can see this color visual graph is letting me see. And again, I haven't had to run a report. I haven't had to do anything. I'm still live in the MIS. And I can tell that story over the last couple of years, term, month or week, simply by clicking a button and the graph will change in real time. So, you know, if you're doing parents evening, you can come here and say, look, your son's really improved. We've done some interventions. Look how well he's doing. We can see the mark breakdown as well. Now, what's important here is that you can always take your data out of Arbor into a format of choice or cleverly, you can go to the live feed, take the code, put it into a Google sheet or an Excel sheet and whoever opens that document on their on their machine it will it will give them the update real-time information that can be for anything in arba staff absence year six assessment attendance data doesn't matter you'll see that throughout the system uh, so if the governors have got a pick concern about a certain area give them the live feed and they can open it when they need to and again you've got overtime and headline measures also within the profile you can look at the behavior behavior module is superb you can do some very clever escalation and rules, standardizes policy, creates consistency. But then you can see the weekly behavior scores. You can look at the positives or the negatives, hover over, get a bit more information. See behavior by time of day, you know, the trends or themes that are coming in and incidents by type. And the, the incidents are your school's incidents. It's a blank canvas. You tell us what the types are for your school. Um, communication notes we've spoken about. I can also see, you know, the current, what he's working at. So maths, reading and writing, working towards and exceeding. So I've got that story straight away, really easy. You can look at the interventions that we're offering as a school. So this is everything that we've been running, all the provisions, look at the reviews, and we can see the cost. So how much is it costing us? And, you know, has it made a difference, his behavior to his attendance? Easy for me to find that out. So without labouring the point too much, you can see that everything that you need around the child is here, including, you know, the basic recording of planned absence, just pre-fill the mark. Maybe he's ill. I can repeat that. So if he's going to be in hospital for a few weeks, set that to repeat, pin it to the, to the top of his profile and everybody knows and the job's done. The basics. Attendance, you come to your attend daily attendance um, dashboard, which I'm in now. This is telling me that today's date, all the registers have been done. And I can see that, you know, my year six, 26 are in. Nobody was late. The three are absent. And you hover over and Arbor just gives you a little bit more information. And if you need more, you click into it. What I want to do, though, is my follow ups. So let's have a look. Today's date, always defaulted to. As with anything, the flexibility is yours to change the dates and the students. If you if you want to see yesterday or you want to see last week, you just want to see pupil premium, just tell Arbor to do that. However, I want to see my no reasons. Right, there's four today, four no reasons. So what I'm doing here, I'm highlighting the students because the comms module is built into Arbor. You don't need to open parent mail or teachers to parents or whatever. You can do it directly from your MIS. Follow up with guardians. Yep, I'm gonna send it to those people. That's correct, my template's already been built and now I'm gonna send the message. So that means that I have done my follow ups and that took me what, 20 seconds to highlight, send, done. It's processing, we're waiting for the parents to contact us. And when they've done, we just turn no reason into the, you know, the authorized, unauthorized illness, the right code. So those no reasons texts and email we just sent out will be logged against the student's profile. So as though we sent four, four students will have it. So if we sent 20, it works the same way. So really simple, cutting down your time, follow-ups, done. Now, we've also got a lot of analytical tools for you to explore. So continuous absence. Again, let's say you want to have a look from the 1st of April to now. So I've got it into an order of days. So I can see from the 1st of April, continuous absent. These guys here, 
they're all more than three days. What do you want to do? So what we could do now is create a custom group directly from the attendance dashboard to monitor. I'm going to add them straight away. Alternatively, you could create an intervention if you want to kind of address this absence issue. You might have one already going. Or alternatively, you might want to send comms to the parents. What Arbor's doing here is it's it's moving away from um, flat data. Uh, we have to run a report, then you've got flat data to, I suppose we call it free, you know, 3D data really, because it's the ability to look at your data and then take an action to change the story and do something about it in real time. And that works for persistent absenteeism, that works for planned, and that works for latecomers. And again, you just, you know, change this date, 1st of April to today. I could say, just show me my free school meal or SEN, but what I've got here is from the 1st of April to today, all my lates. So these guys here, they've been more than 20 minutes late. I'm gonna send some comms out to the parents. I'm also gonna create a custom group to monitor that. So I've spoken about dynamic dashboards. You can see real time data, quite straightforward. But if you do need to run certain reports, which all schools do, then, and that could be anything from staff absence more than five days, bullying report, salary report, governors, you know, attendance versus assessment, year six data. It really doesn't matter. You build it once though in Arbor, once only. And once you've got your report built, so let's say I've got my weekly attendance below 90%, we schedule it to run when we need to. So let's say you want this every Friday and you want it to go to the head or you know whoever SLT, then you schedule it and Arbor will build that report every Friday and email the people that you've told it to go to. You ne never have to think about that report again, Arbor will do all the work for you. Then if I'm the recipient of the report, I'm looking at the report, it's a live data report, I can take an action directly from that report itself. This is saving schools a really lot of time and that admin burden of running reports it just freeing up people from having to worry about it. So if you've got 30 reports, build them in Arbor, schedule them, and then you don't have to worry about it again. Until you want to change it and you edit it, add new fields, go back to scheduling. So I mentioned interventions, uh, and it is worth noticing that we've, you know, some people use EduKey or other sort of add-ons. We do have integrations with about 120 different uh, partners. We've got an open API. If something works for you, we say, you know, stick with it. But Arba does do interventions very, very well. So we can look at the provision map here. And if Ofsted walk in and say, well, what have you been doing the last couple of years? You've got your historical provision map in one place. You can click on an intervention and Arba will ask you at the beginning, you know, how, what, what, what's the participation criteria? So who is eligible and how do we know it's a success? And that's, that's really as simple as saying anybody that's pupil premium or SCN or is attendance below 90% is eligible. Once that happens in the system, they get triggered, they get enrolled, and it's the same with the outcomes. Um, how do we know it's been successful? And you define that criteria. When that happens, they get de-enrolled and it's on their profile as evidence. Um, and you can look at the individual provision map and the costs um, you know, across the staff costs, the funding sources, and the intervention costs. From a staffing perspective, first of all, recording an absence, it's simple as putting the name in, it defaults to today's date, the category could be self-isolating, and then I just create the staff absence. Arba's telling me the cover's needed, so if this was a breakfast club or a lunch club or an intervention, Arba's still gonna say, well, cover's needed, and to set cover, I will cleverly tell me that Sonia's covered this previously and she's available. So is Melissa. Um, let's give Melissa the cover. The tick tells me the cover's now been set. Melissa, on her timetable, it will come up. You know, she's covering the, the year, this year three lesson, year four. You can also um, have your calendar linked to your smartphone as well. So if that was the case, this would notify her that she's covering the lesson. So if it's an early 7.30 in the morning, you know, people have got that notice. And it's the same thing for the afternoon period, but uh, I'll give Melissa an easier day and just arrange the cover with two different members of staff. Within 
just like the students adults have their own profile you can jump to the same sort of sections you can send comms out to the staff member log phone calls i've got chris's absent list in one place again i could filter that so if i just want to see stress related illness or physical related illness it would filter these out and i can hover over and see what happened in 2019 we had to have range a lot of cover and he's got some back problems I, I like the professional development in the system because it allows us to set ongoing objectives for the staff. We can see what was previously set and whether they were met or not. And we can do appraisals and we can do lesson observations in the system. So your, so your MIS as an ecosystem has students, has staff, you can set other absences, you've got professional development, you've got the contracts all in one place. Um, from a data perspective, you've got your live errors on a data quality dashboard. It, it, it is what it is. It's a data quality dashboard. It's, it's telling you where your live errors are. You can click on them and change them in real time. And then you can do your you know, school workforce census. You've got your duplicates. You can also do your you know, normal data returns, your school census, all within the system. And, and admin users report a high degree of user satisfaction when they come over to Arba, when they're doing the census. They might be the most nervous group beforehand because they're used to an old system, but once they come over, they, re they report record really high user satisfaction, as do head teachers as well. Just sticking with the admin side of things, you know you've got all your check types in one place. You can create as many different check types. Then you can review them code of conduct, right to work, first aid, policy reviews, whatever you need, you create them in Arba, then you've got them all in one place, as is the uh, single central record. Don't need a second set, um, spreadsheet for that. That, again, is in the system as well. Um, other things around that, let's just look at the comms. So the, the comms section is built into Arba, so you can send whole school comms or you can send specific year groups. You can download the comms. If Ofsted say, you know, I need to see the last three years of comms, you can just download it as a PDF, and it's really straightforward. And I think Arba comes into its own when you're doing your comms in the system, either for follow-ups for, you know, attendance or sending comms out. And it's all going to be logged neatly against the student's um, profile. Is there any questions just at, just at this kind of point? No, good. Or not good. I'm just going to show a couple of more things um, because it's easy to kind of get lost in it. Um, I'd like to just show you. So behavior. I think this is a really important, it's a really good part of the system. So reporting on behavior doesn't need to, you don't need to go and run a report. You just come here and you say to Arba, tell me from this date, my year six, pupil premium or, or whatever. You can either do it by grouping. So show me my SEM versus not SCN or my gender or whatever, whatever you kind of need. You, you can get quite granular, save the changes, and then you've got your instant report of your behavior in your school. And we use a level five negative to a level five positive. We can even create a live feed. So if the governors are concerned about behavior in your school, they've got access. And then I can just hover over and see what's what's going on. SLT could come to the dashboard. They can see these incidents coming in live. So you can see watched by me and you can see resolved in your school. And, you know, we can assign incidents to certain people and you come here and see what's been assigned to you. Now, I mentioned a minus five negative to a plus five positive, but again, it's your language, your school, your incidents. You tell us what is a minus five negative. Once you've done that, there's some really intelligent escalations which create consistency and standardize your behavior policy across the school. For example, if somebody gets a minus five, whatever that is, and you decide that the head should be notified, mum and dad should have a text message, points should be deducted, and an exclusion should happen, Arba will do that without you having to do anything. It will take care of that. It's the same as escalation. So if a child gets a minus one, it could be low level talking, not really a problem. But if they get three in a day or three in a week or three in a term, you can escalate it to the next one up and then other rules will follow 
as you're moving up the ladder. It works for therapeutic approaches and ladder approaches as well. And it works for positive. So if somebody does something amazing and you want that certain things to happen, then that's what happened. Now, with special schools and like behavioral schools, if, if somebody, you know, smashed the window, Arbor will notify the maintenance. It will actually locate the room as well. So I did work in a behavioral school where, you know, lots of windows and things did get smashed. So logging this incident, I don't have to then make a phone call. Could you let the caretaker know? Could you do this? Could you do that? Arbor does it all for you. Um, clubs trips all straightforward set your club up how many people what's the reason is it paid for put your sessions confirm the details same with trips on a trip because it's a cloud-based system if you've got an ipad with a sim card in it and you're going to the theater or you're going to a trip you can take the register on the coach there and back on your ipad you could also log a behavioral incident if people are mucking about in the theater or if you need to send emergency comms out you can do it directly from your ipad if you're going to be late you could send a comms to all the parents say we're on the coach but we're late so it gives you that access to your mis straight away you know the records medical conditions of people on the trip but if you need to go detail detailed then you know we can just click on the student profile um and we've got that information as well as all the contact information. So people don't have to take reams of paper uh, with them. I can be on the coach, I'm on my iPad and I can see that Ted's in difficulty. I can send a message to the parents or I've got his emergency contact number directly on the MIS. Finally, just wanna show you what the parents can see um, on the parent portal. So we've got an app free of charge. Parents can download it. You as a school can share the attendance, the, pra the progress, the behavior. You can turn these off and on. What's popular is the parents' evening. So as a dad, I can come on here and I can book, um, I can book some time with my teacher's parents. So self-scheduling is open. So I could click on that and book a slot for my child's teacher. And then I can download them as a PDF. I can also download the report cards that the, for each term. So they're going to be stored. I can download them. I can see the um, I can see my child's behavior. I can see his curriculum tracking, what he's working on. I can also see the clubs and trips that that Ted's enrolled in. And I could also enroll him for other trips as well. I can top up my balance using my debit card, make a payment as well. And what is also good is the ability to update the contact details. So at the beginning of term, you could send out your comms to all the parents and say, make sure your email address, telephone numbers are up to date. And as the parent, we can do the heavy lifting for the school. I make the changes, the school just approves them. You know, is there any dietary issues? Has anything changed over the summer? You can put it here and then the school will approve it. But you can send messages to the parents for free via the app. And the parents can also message the school via the app as well. And again, all that's free of charge in app messaging. And you can also push consents out to the app. And I can give consent via the app electronically. So you can go paperless quite quickly with the Arbor app. I'm going to finish there. I, obviously, I haven't spoken about assessments, but that does warrant a kind of a bigger conversation. I think, you know, we can get lost in it. But just going back to the teachers and the school, you have access to the assessment data always on the dashboard, who's above, who's below. But within Alba, you've got some very, very powerful assessment tools, some analysis. You can push out headline measures um, that you choose. You're in charge of your policy and you can always see where the data is coming from and take an action. But again, that warrants probably a bigger conversation to work at how you're doing things and how that can work in Arbor. Has that been useful? We've got some nodding. <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah. Nodding's does, good. Does anyone have any questions for Mark? No? That was either really good or really bad. I can't wait. <laughs> 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 um, 
Right. Well, Stuart, do you want to share your screen again just to go through the last few bits, or shall I? Yes, I shall indeed. Right, brilliant. Thank you. So, uh, yes. So, in terms of what we can do to help, um, as a next step, if you'd like to, firstly, before we get to the support side, if you would like to arrange a one to one with ourselves and Arbor to talk specifically about how this could potentially work in, in your school, let us know and we can arrange all that. And uh, we now have two schools that have just migrated across to, to Arbor from Sims. And um, we're working with those, both those schools and providing them with support and a little bit of additional training on top of what the, the Arbor training, so that the Arbor training takes place um, as well and, and Arbor deliver the training. And we're providing a little bit of top up training on top of that, along with with that with the support. And with the support, it's unlimited. Uh, email us a question, and we will soon have access to go directly into your MIS to look at the problem. That's coming very soon. At the moment, we use video meets to, to be able to see your screen, see what's happening, and we do have uh, access into Arbor's help desk if we need it. So. We, we did with one of the schools, there was a slight issue with the migration. We had Arbor uh, and ourselves on a video meet with the school and we, we went through everything with them and that was arranged very quickly. So so we're there to help and make sure this is a success for you really. So we can work with something there and, and build a support package that, that's right for your for your school. Definitely. Um, thanks Stuart. And, and just to uh, kind of back up what Stuart said there um, and give you an idea of, of, of our partners program and what, what they go through. So we have quite a rigorous accreditation program that um, our partners have to go through in order to be able to deliver that support. So um, Stuart and Melody have gone through that um, and Andrew actually as well who I can see on the call. Hi Andrew. Um, and, and I know Melody's doing some additional training at the moment as well just to, to really reach kind of Arbor Guru status. So um, Vice Lights have been really proactive about that um, uh, which has been great and, and I think just giving you that extra hand holding because our support um that you know you get from arbor through your implementation period is great um, and we do some group training sessions for you so that you get up and running and you kind of understand the system but as, as stuart said it's about making sure that you've got somebody there that you can go to to the, sort of help you uh, realize the long-term benefits with arbor and that's there for you after implementation as well to make sure that you really are embedding things because it's a long-term change moving mis and you know there'll, there'll be a lot you do in the first few months and then it's about making sure you keep up that momentum and that every member of staff feels confident using it and i think that's why i'm um, working with a, a team like vitalize comes in um, so yeah, I would really encourage you to find out a little bit more about that with Stuart. Um, we're also doing an offer at the moment um, because we know that a lot of schools who are on Sims, um, your licenses tend to run from the 1st of April to the 31st of March each year. And you've got to give, I think, three months notice. So you've usually got to give notice to Capita or your local authority by the end of December each year if you want to switch. Um, so we're kind of aware that you're, you're kind of stuck in that um, renewal pattern, I guess. And what we wanted to do was give schools the flexibility to move a little bit earlier or move whenever suits you, um, which for a lot of schools is, is autumn term actually, and it's you know October half term makes a lot of sense as a time to go or, or one of those kind of weekends in October. So we wanted to give you the flexibility to be able to do that without double paying for your MIS until April. So um, this is what this offer does. And it basically means if you choose a partner for support like Vitalize, um, you can switch to Arbor anytime from the 1st of October onwards um, and that could be, let's say, any weekend from that 1st of October right through to, you know, you could do it in January, February, whenever suits you. You won't have to start paying for Arbor until the 1st of April. Um, and it's not like a back, backdating thing. You, it, you'll just use Arbor for free, basically, until the 1st of April. Um, so that can kind of give you the flexibility to decide when you want to switch rather than being held to when your Sims license expires. Um, and hopefully a little bit of extra extra incentive um, to, to get on with it and, and make a decision because I think some schools have been thinking about this for quite a while but because of COVID and everything it's one of those things that gets put on the back burner so hope, we, we think this should hopefully give schools the little push to go okay we're going to do it now. Um, so in terms of next steps as Stuart said if you would like to book a personalised demo to kind of go through in a little bit more detail some of the areas that we haven't had time to cover today like assessments and things like that and just also chat more about your specific school and your needs um, um, we'd love to do that and um, you can get in touch with Stuart to, to set that up. Stuart will then put you in touch with um, the right person at Arbor. Um, and we've also 
I'll share these slides with you, or, or Stuart will, um, and you'll have a link to go and do a systems audit, which is a really good first step. And what that is, is a spreadsheet that we've put together, which basically lists out all the different things that you can use R before and um, gives you space to say what you're using for that now, because we know a lot of schools use multiple separate systems and can then replace those when they move to Arbo, which can save you quite a lot of money. So, um, and, and time as well, you know, different logins and whatever. So um, that's quite a useful tool and just starting to think about, right, what is the picture of our systems now, as well as SIMS, what else have we got going on? And it could be teachers to parents, parent pay, school comms, you know, it could be a meal booking thing, a behavior watch. You know, there might be lots of things that you've built up over the years for different things and it just gives you that chance to look at them how much are they are they still working for staff if so then great and we integrate with a lot of those but um if not then it might be something you want to look at bringing into um into arbor so have a look at that systems order that might be a useful exercise to do and i'm sure that Stuart and melody would be happy to help you do that um and then yeah um just just let us know if you'd like a, a kind of separate demo for you um any final questions before we wrap up and let you get on? Anything that anyone wanted to ask either myself or Mark? Hello, yeah, Pete, Pete Goodman. Hi, um, yeah, just on, um, you mentioned about doing that audit thing with the spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got quite a few systems which we're not happy with. Yeah. Quite a few that we, we, we are very happy with. Presumably yeah. we can have a discussion about how they, they will interface and whether they're syncable, exactly. um, particularly with pupil assessment. Yeah. Um, but the other thing, it, fi the financial management systems, is there anything mm. in the in the plan for Arbor to be creating one of those? That is a really good point. Um, so uh, we're definitely not going to build our own uh, financial management system. Um, I think we've got enough on to build um, the world's best MIS um, and yeah. we kind of don't want to split our focus. Um, and also there are quite a lot of really good finance systems out there now, I think yeah. cloud-based ones as well. So kind of didn't want to reinvent the wheel. What we'd recommend is have a look at some of the ones that are out there. Um, it, you can keep FMS alongside Arbor, yeah. and a lot of our schools do, but if you want to look at something new anyway, um, then I'd recommend Access Education is a good one to look at because it's cloud-based, it's quite user-friendly and we work quite closely with them. We've got a partnership with them and we're working on an integration with their budgeting and HR tools at the moment, possibly finance down the road. So that's probably what I'd recommend. And then also a lot of other schools use Zero for education, um, which is really cheap um, and really user friendly, but might be quite different because it's not sort of designed for education. And um, so that might take a little bit of looking at to see whether it would work for you. Um, and then there's, you know, there's lots of other ones out there as well, like Sage and, and things like that. But yeah. um, it's definitely an opportunity when you're looking at MIS to look at other things as well. Um, uh, and yeah, as you said, we will go through that systems audit with you then and use that as a tool to sort of think as, as part of your implementation, when do you want to roll out certain things in Arbor and when do we need to have certain integrations and interfaces set up between your other systems that you are keeping? Uh, so it's a really useful tool for you to do. Great. Thank you. Good questions. Anything else from anybody else? <laughs> 